The self-hating gay Republican group Go Proud is closing. According to Addicting Info, quote, after Go Proud founder Jimmy LaSalvia quit the organization and left the Republican Party last year for their intolerant views, the entire organization is now done. So after the founder had called it quits, the co-founder, a guy named Chris Barron, also left the Go Proud organization in 2013. And the reason why he left is interesting and not surprising at the same time. Uh, CPAC, so the Conservative Political Action Conference, denied them representation at the event. So they didn't allow them into their goofy three-day event. Because they're gay. Isn't that amazing? The Republicans like to pretend like they're trying to reach out to black people and women and gay people, and they didn't even allow them into the CPAC event. Now, to be fair, of course, the, the Republican Party doesn't actually run the CPAC event, but the people at the CPAC event are closely aligned with the establishment Republicans. There's no doubt about that. So they were denied again for the 2014 conference, and I guess these guys finally got the message that Republicans don't like you. There, I said it. It's really not that hard of a thing to grasp. The fascinating thing was that the log cabin Republicans, that is another gay Republican group, the only other one, I think there's got to be only two, because there's about two gay Republicans left in the country. So the log cabin Republicans, they actually were somewhat more reasonable, I guess you could say, because they were actually in favor of giving themselves equal rights. So they would stand up for gay marriage at a federal level, and um, they supported all different kinds of LGBT protections throughout the country. And they basically said, look, we agree with the right-wing economic agenda, but we still think we should have rights. Well, Go Proud was a, an even bigger sellout group, because they didn't even really stand up for gay marriage. They were just flat-out, awkward self-haters. And one of the top members of the group uh, says, no, we're actually not even really stopping right now. What we're doing is we're just gonna uh, close up shop for a little bit and do a little rebranding, and then we'll be back. Sure. Sure you will. Now, uh, the reason why I think this is a noteworthy story is that, you know, I shouldn't even be saying this, because if anybody in the right would ever listen to the show, which I doubt they would, uh, they actually could use this advice and it would help them in future elections. It, it, it's not even that hard for Republicans to get some votes back. You know, like as of right now, whenever there's a big election and there's a big turnout, especially for presidential elections, Democrats have a strong advantage. And one of the main reasons is that on the social issues, the Democrats aren't insane. So they're more in favor of freedom when it comes to substances, for example. I mean, they're not fully there, but they're much more in favor of it than the Republicans are. When it comes to reproductive rights for women, they're more in favor of getting the government out of your private life. Um, and when it comes to stuff like gay marriage, they don't want big government getting in your bedroom or getting in your private life and saying, I'm going to tell you who you can and cannot marry. They want to get, you know, they want to abide m more by the principle of equality. And... All the right wing has to do to really get back in the conversation and be a legitimate opposition party, at least in terms of turnout for elections, all they have to do is say, you know what, we're going to copy the European right wingers and drop everything when it comes to social issues and only focus on, uh, you know, fiscal issues and domestic issues and economic issues. And by the way, I mean, I'm not even going to get into the fact that Republicans... They might talk about fiscal conservatism, but they don't actually abide by it. They don't actually, you know, implement policies or pass legislation that actually is fiscally conservative. So putting aside the fact that they're not even consistent on their economic message, if they could at least have their economic message uh, in line and drop the social nonsense, drop the uber religiosity that wants to tell you exactly how you can live and wants to lock you up for the most minor of offenses, if they drop that, they're right back to being considered, oh, okay, they're a legitimate opposition. Especially since we live in the U.S., and in the U.S., we have a two-party system. You know, we don't have uh, all these multiple 
viable political parties, and because of the way our government is set up, there's a lot of historical reasons why if one party has a stronghold for an extended period of time, even if the other party doesn't even necessarily do anything right, they have a better chance of doing well in future elections. So, mixing in the historical trends with becoming more reasonable on social policy, that's one of the ways out, out of, you know, never never land for these Republicans. But they're, it's so, they're not changing, man. They released the autopsy report where they say, look, here's why we did poorly. Women hate us, black people hate us, and gay people hate us, and young people hate us. Let's at least pretend like we care about them. We don't have to actually change our policies to care about them, just pretend like we care about them. This is what their autopsy report said. And then what do they do? None of that. <laughs> they didn't even change their rhetoric. Why? Because the people on the far right were so stupid that they even attacked the idea of changing the rhetoric but keeping the policies the same. They were like, no, we need to be assholes and still let people know that we're assholes. <laughs>